The state of Alaska is grappling with stabilizing its economy in an ever-changing geopolitical world. When the legislature is in session, you need to know firsthand about decisions being made that will affect your lives as Alaskans for years to come. I recommend watching Capital View with Terence O'Malley and Annabelle Lund. This is Terence O'Malley in the state capitol. Dome, sweet dome. Could become a catchphrase that these fiberglass structures catch on in Alaska. The dome developers contend they offer advantages over conventional housing, making them an attractive solution to problems that have perplexed mankind since he moved out of caves. Perhaps their strongest selling point is portability. As you can see, they're put together very quickly. This three-man crew, two of whom had never seen a dome before being hired for the job, put this one together in under two hours. The military has expressed an interest in purchasing the bulletproof structures to act as the tent of the future. Also, the Red Cross is considering using them as temporary shelter for emergency situations. Well, we have three major markets. We have the government and institutional market. We have a rural bush housing and we have the retail market. We are real excited about the government and institutional markets. We were in Washington, D.C. about two months ago. This could be the tent of the future for the United States military. Presently, the United States Army, which is the most sophisticated army in the world, uh, uses laser bombs and smart weapons and see-at-night glasses to shelter their troops are using the same thing that the Roman legions used, which is a piece of cloth, a tent over their heads and they are screaming and demanding for something more sophisticated and higher tech and we walked through the door and they responded uh, ecstatically um, the ones we make for the military uh, will go up as fast as a tent and once it's up it's a bulletproof bunker it will uh, be made of kevlar the national guard of alaska is already sold on the domes envisioning a variety of uses for them general john shaper at a recent battalion commander's convention in juno uh, we have uh probably a lot of uses that we could put uh, a building like this to uh, all over the state. I think it's good enough that we'll look at uh, securing some funds to get a few of these to test them in various parts of the state under varying uh, weather conditions and uses. I was going to say, what, what kinds of things, how will you go about testing it? What types of uh, endurance tests and whatnot would you put it through? Well, we, we have right now a dry storage uh, problem all over the state because our armories are small and and our units are, are big and and uh, and we've gotten a lot more equipment we have no place to store them so uh, that's the first place we'd, we'd look at uh, this uh, just an additional temporary storage building uh, where we where we lack storage uh, after that then we'd look at uh, utilizing these buildings in a uh, mission orientation now either you know for for assisting us with our combat missions, uh, uh, something more permanent than a tent, and uh, and also our uh, our uh, emergency uh, services role, because uh, you know we we have that responsibility too to assist the communities uh, during uh, disasters, and it may have a real you know valid use there. Them. They can use it for uh, support facilities uh, in the back combat zones, uh, for storage, for uh, command post headquarters, for mash style hospital units. You can connect the domes together, uh, as many as you want in any configuration you want. And unlike tents, they're dry, they're warm, you can sterilize them, uh, and they're, they're sturdy. Uh, tents last six to eight months of continuous use. These will last 30 years. What about for emergency situations? Well, that's that's another real big use for it. Um, we can put enough of these in a Hercules aircraft and go into a disaster site to, to build a, a whole town in a matter of a day, a small town, obviously. Um, we These break down, as you see, uh, and stack on top of each other like Pringles potato chips, and so they're very, very compact once they're down, and they store very easily. So what they're excited about, and the National Guard is involved with, with emergency services, too, is that you can warehouse them for an unlimited amount of time without worry of rot or milk do like tents and when you have a disaster situation you can throw them in a plane and, and have them set up in a day you can use some for uh, sleeping quarters you can use some for medical and food supplies you can use some as command posts to uh, to stage the emergency services and you can use some uh, uh, for medical uh, places to take care of the injured people 
The domes are 20 foot in diameter, 12 feet high, with 314 square feet. The lightweight Omnidome weighs less than 1,200 pounds, and the Survival Dome checks in at 2,200 pounds. What is perhaps most fascinating about the spheres is how quickly they can be assembled by, say, five men. This one took a little under an hour. Of course, this was the first dome they'd ever seen, and with a little practice, a smaller crew can assemble them even faster. Not only that, they stack and pack neatly and can be shipped anywhere in the world where there's a need. Tarrant O'Malley, the Alaska Network, in Juneau.